John Kerry's uh, shadow diplomacy, how does that impact the deliberations? I don't think it impacts it at all. I think the president uh, spoke out about that pretty clearly. And I, I don't think that we would take advice from somebody who created what the president sees to be one of the worst deals ever made. Uh, I'm not sure why we would start listening to him now. So the administration slamming John Kerry for engaging in what they called shadow diplomacy after the former secretary of state, no longer the Secretary of State, is holding meetings privately with Iranian officials trying to save the nuclear deal with Iran that he helped broker. But that deal could come to a halt potentially tomorrow because we know now that the president will make his feelings known, his decision known on this. He said, I'll announce my decision on the deal tomorrow from the White House at 2 p.m. And so now the countdown is on. So what will happen and will world leaders buy into this? Here now, Mark Thiessen, American Enterprise Institute scholar and Fox News contributor. Mark, good, good to have you with us. Good to be with um, you, Martha. You, you know, when you look up the definition of the Logan Act, it essentially uh -huh. says that you know, private individuals are not allowed to make any kind of deal or negotiation with any foreign leader or, or attempt it. Seems pretty that, clear, even though it's never used. Yeah, it's never used. And it's a uh, if you talk to most conservative legal scholars, they would tell you it's unconstitutional. But I don't, I don't know whether what John Kerry did was illegal, but it is certainly outrageous. And it's certainly hypocritical. I mean, if you recall, in 2015, when John Kerry was negotiating this horrible Iran deal, Tom Cotton and 46 Republican senators wrote a letter to Iran's leaders in which they explain, simply explained the Senate's role in an advice and consent in the approval of international agreements. And John Kerry was outraged. He expressed his, his utter disbelief at their irresponsible actions. He said, this is a quote, to write the leaders in the middle of a negotiation is quite stunning and ignores more than two centuries of precedent in the conduct of American foreign policy. Now, Tom Cotton was and is a sitting United States senator. The Senate has a constitutional role in American foreign policy. John Kerry has a constitutional role in nothing. He's a former official. He has no you know, status I mean, Generally, whatsoever. people move off the stage. And, it, you know, as I think you pointed out um, in some thoughts that you sent to me earlier, you know, uh -huh. it would be one thing if he was trying to rally with some of our allies and encourage yeah. them to stand firm, you know, against mm -hmm. any attempt to pull out of the deal. But instead, he, he's rallying with the enemy. Yes, he's working with a terror. He's he's working with collaborating with a terrorist state, a regime that has that has rallies where people chant death to America in order to undermine the foreign policy of the United States of America. That now I I, I hesitate to say this, but that could be collusion with a foreign power <laughs> against well, to when undermine you think about our the democracy. That, that Sally we Yates was collusion. very <laughs> Sally Yates was uh, you know wanted to charge Mike Flynn with with the Logan Act, the violations of the Logan Act. She was yeah. outraged that he. He was discussing things as a transition official with a foreign <laughs> ambassador. I mean, he was on the way in into government yeah. at that point. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, it just you just have to deal with both things as, as apples and apples. So if, if no, she was outraged about that, she should absolutely be outraged about this as well. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And look, John Kerry has transitioned out of government. He is a private private citizen. Now, his defenders, what they say is, well, all former secretaries of state keep in touch with 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 their their colleagues around the world. And Henry Kissinger did this. He was a globetrotting diplomat for years after leaving government. Well, there's a big difference. Henry Kissinger, especially at a time, a sensitive moment like this, he would actually ask the permission of the White House, whether whether it was a Republican or Democrat president to go out and talk. He would probably he would sometimes carry a message from the president. Or, uh, he would, yeah, he would or, brief yeah, exactly. them on How what was happening. He was Do you mind if I sit down and have a conversation or not, let me know. Yeah. I don't want to be, you know, unhelpful exactly. here. Um, let, let's take a look. Ben Rhodes, obviously, who was very involved uh, as a member of the Obama administration with this whole Iran deal as well, <laughs> is outraged because he is un he has the understanding that there was an Israeli U.S. attempt to dig up dirt on the people who developed this deal um, in order to discredit them like a, a you know a sort of yeah. dossier against the people who who built this deal he says this is not behavior that should be acceptable in a democracy it is thuggish mean-spirited and casts a chilling and threatening cloud of, of over public service that risks extending far beyond me and colin call who was also named in that what do you think mark uh you know what's unacceptable in our democracy ben rhodes 
Ben Rhodes is unacceptable in our democracy. Ben Rhodes is the is the least qualified person to ever sit in a position of, of authority in foreign policy. I doubt that the story is true. I doubt that Donald Trump's White House was doing this. It maybe they say the Trump team may have been involved in this. I, 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 that could be anybody. I think Mike Pompeo and John Bolton have better things to do cleaning up Ben Rhodes's messes mm -hmm. uh, than, than to, to, to dig up dirt on, on yeah. Ben Rhodes. Uh, we're worth remembering that Ben Rhodes bragged about the echo chamber and the young journalists in their 20s who didn't know anything about foreign policy that he was able to create this echo chamber yeah. um, to support this Iran deal. So um, just worth, worth pointing out. Mark, thank you. Good to see sure. you as always. Thank you. Thanks.